Uh, Senator Rick Santorum is on our Newsmakers line with us, fresh off the big debate performance last night with a big election looming tomorrow. And, uh, Senator, good to have you with us. Well, thank you, Steve. It's great to be on the show. I appreciate the opportunity. Quick question, and, and uh, we want to talk some about the debate and some of the other issues, but we were, we were talking in the last segment a little bit about how the numbers work going ahead. And I was looking at, at some numbers in terms of where you're on the ballot. For example, only uh, Mitt Romney and Ron Paul will be on the ballot on Super Tuesday in Virginia, about 10% of the delegates on Super Tuesday to be awarded in the state of Virginia. You don't even have a shot at those. When you, and I think the same thing's true to some extent for Newt Gingrich as well, when you look ahead to places where you're either maybe not on the ballot or don't have delegates, can you get to the magic 1,100 plus delegates to actually win this thing? Oh my goodness, yes. Uh, the, the, Virginia is really the only state that we're not on. Uh, D.C. is another, but in D.C. doesn't have very many delegates. Every, everywhere else, uh, we're on the ballot. Uh, we will be on the ballot. Uh, there are some uh, slates where I don't have a full slate of delegates in a congressional district, but they're they're proportional. Uh, so the uh, so the chance that you would win, for example, all three delegates in a proportional election is is unlikely anyway. So you probably only need one delegate uh, unless you had a huge, huge win in that in uh, in that district. So, no, we are uh, you know, we are no problem whatsoever uh, in uh, in getting the number of delegates. And uh, obviously uh, we're disappointed in Virginia, but, you know, not all the delegates in Virginia are selected uh, at the uh, uh, on the on, on primary day. A lot of those delegates are folks that have uh, the ability and discretion that, that are appointed are called super delegates that can vote for other candidates. And uh, so we're 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 very, very confident, uh, as is, I'm sure, uh, Congressman Gingrich, who's pretty much in the same place we are, that there are plenty of delegates out there and that uh, uh, Virginia is the um, is the outlier, uh, not the uh, not the rule. What you need more than anything else is for this battle to continue. And and we we've talked again uh, earlier today that what Mitt Romney has been pushing is the air of inevitability. While the difference between 34 up and eight points down in in Iowa may not matter much in terms of numbers, winning versus losing is huge symbolically. And if you or Newt Gingrich are able to pick up a win in South Carolina, we would head to Florida with instead of Mitt Romney being three and zero, he would be one for three, which does change the whole status of the race. It, it sure, it's already the status of the race has already changed. Uh, Mitt Romney is not two and zero. Mitt Romney is one and one, and the one state he won. Let's just be clear. He lived in that state. He's been campaigning there for six years. Uh, he spent millions uh, for every consultant and everybody that uh, they, they could be uh, could be hired in New Hampshire. And it's really important to understand: fifty three percent of the people who voted in the New Hampshire primary weren't Republicans, uh, and and the and the forty seven percent it did. The Rep- those Republicans don't necessarily represent the values of the rest of the Republican Party. So. You know, if if that's his signature win, it's a it's a pretty weak signature win, uh, given uh, given uh, you know where what our country, excuse me, our candidate has to do in appealing to the country, you know, in order to win uh, to win this election. So let's see how how South Carolina turns out. I think you'll find, without question, that Newt uh, Newt Gingrich and I combined will easily outdistance uh, Mitt Romney in the South Carolina primary, and that will show again that uh, you know there is a there's a room for a consensus conservative to line up against uh, uh, a moderate and and obviously I believe compared to Newt Gingrich I'm, I'm number one more conservative than he is and and have articulated a, a much more conservative vision now as a, and as well as in the past and I think we're uh, we're we're the we're the better uh, trusted candidate who has as a conservative and a conservative that's been able to win in the tough states that we have to win in order to uh, to win this uh, general election, uh, that we're the best person to step forward and, and not only be the uh, counter to Romney, but the counter to Obama. This has been a very volatile election. Just on Sunday, we had polls in South Carolina showing Mitt Romney with about a 14 point lead over Newt Gingrich. Yesterday, a number of polls before the Perry withdrawal, before the Marianne Gingrich story, all this other chaos yesterday. Newt Gingrich had moved into a slight lead over Romney, about a 15-point shift in the polls in like four days. Very volatile. If you can't get a win in South Carolina, does it help you more for, for Mitt to, to win and kind of stop uh, Newt's momentum? Or does a, does a Newt win help you live to fight another day, perhaps uh, into Florida and beyond? I'm not a particularly good political analyst. Here's what I would tell you, <laughs> that uh, you know, Newt's from the neighboring state of Georgia and you know, just a few miles away in Atlanta. And you know, this, is, uh, this is his backyard, obviously. Uh, Mitt, uh, governor of Massachusetts, which people in New Hampshire covered, and the fact that he has a home and has lived in, in New Hampshire for a long time, this was his backyard. In the one contest that was in nobody's backyard, I won. And uh, I, I think we have to look at it that way. And, and now let's go to Florida and, 
and uh, again, uh, you know, not a, not necessarily an easy state for me, but one that I think we can be competitive in. And and then let's get out into the rest of the country where uh, where there is no uh, there is no uh, there's a much more level playing field for a candidate like me. And uh, I'm I'm excited about our opportunities there. I'm not going to go all Glenn Beck on you, but I do. I like I like your positions on the issues. I like what you say. I like what you've done. One issue that I have and a lot of conservatives have is your decision to back Arlen Specter over Pat Toomey, who is a great conservative senator. Explain that one to me. Well, I would just say this, that the the issue was a 51-49 United States Senate, and uh, we had two to three Supreme Court nominees coming up. And to me, the most important thing that I I was focused on at the time, and you go back and look, we were fighting judicial uh, appointments uh, tooth and nail on the floor of the United States Senate. I had understood that uh, that was... Unfortunately, and I do say that, unfortunately, judicial nominations have become one of the most important things that happened in the United States Senate and in the country. And I wanted not only for us to have a Republican president, but to have the ability to confirm conservative nominees to the court to replace the two or three conservatives who were going to be leaving the court. And that was my highest priority. Uh, Arlen Specter, when he came and asked me for help, I asked him that uh, if I did help him, uh, you know, he would, there's no question he would win the general election, which he did easily. Uh, the question was whether he would support the president's judicial nominations as chairman of the Judiciary Committee. He promised me that he would do so as long as he was properly consulted. And that, to me, was the most important thing for the conservative cause that I could do, was to make sure that that we had conservative justices like, and for example, not for example, what happened, John Roberts and Sam Alito. And I think by any measure, you go back and look at the confirmation process of Sam Alito, if it had not been for Arlen Specter and the work that he did in batting down every assault that came on Sam Alito, Sam Alito would not be a Supreme Court justice today, and we would not have that strong fourth vote of the conservative caucus. So uh, in the um, in the in the in the uh, Supreme Court. So uh, sometimes you have to make very tough political decisions that don't on the surface look like very smart ones. Uh, and you still people can still question. You can question uh, my judgment, but I can tell you that my convictions were to do the best I could for the causes I believe in, and I think we accomplished that uh, when uh, when we uh, we got those justices confirmed. Last question, because I know you got to run. Uh, resources? Can you can you get the money in fast enough to, to get it in to get the organization together? To, again, what you what you're able to, to hire as staff when you're at four percent in the polls is different than when you're at twenty or twenty five percent in the polls. Can you gear up? Can you raise money quick enough to actually make this a race? as it continues uh yeah, we've been incredibly successful and uh, now with governor perry out of the race i think even more opportunity for us in texas to begin to start raising some money we had a lot of friends and supporters down there who had to sit on the sidelines or or be with the governor uh we feel like a lot of those folks in fact have already come on board and and we're excited about our opportunity to to raise uh, not money there but across this country a little better as the field has narrowed and We've done a great job. In, in the last uh, two weeks, we've raised, I think, four or five, you know, three or four times the amount of money that we raised in the uh, in the previous year. So our, our money's coming in well. We're able to. We went up on on TV yesterday in Florida, uh, and we're going to continue to compete there and and moving forward uh, into the uh, to the remaining primaries. Senator Rick Santorum, great job in the debate last night. Uh, we will see you here in Tennessee in the next few weeks, I'm sure, and uh, look well, forward to that. Yeah, that's one of the states I'm I'm very optimistic. I was talking to my Tennessee coordinator. She was at the event last night and. Uh, they're organizing every county in the state, and we're excited about going to Tennessee. We think that's a that's a state that uh, is right in our wheelhouse, and we can do very well. We'll see you here soon. Uh, go back out. I know you got a bunch of people to talk to with a big vote tomorrow, and we'll catch up again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Rick Santorum, with us from South Carolina. Big day tomorrow. Can uh, I mean you know if if anybody can stop the uh, Mitt Romney Mitt Romanum, it probably helps Rick Santorum and Newt Gingrich. We'll talk more about that in a moment. This is the Steve Gill Show.